Okay, so now for something a little bit different, something with a nucleus. Uh, but uh, Maria was Maria gave a great introduction to some of the problems I'm going to talk about. But uh, and I'm going to talk about ooh, goodness. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, yeah, naming taxa based on DNA sequence, as we've just heard at the issues around prokaryotic uh, sequence. But I'm going to talk about the international code for nomenclature for algae, uh, fungi, and plants. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, International Association of Plant Taxonomy, a little bit about the problem we're trying to solve, uh, the options we have for doing this, and what you could potentially do to help it all happen. So the International Association of Plant Taxonomy is, is not an organization very much different from TADWIG. Um, they have a core standard, uh, not unlike TADWIG, um, the International Code for Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi, and Plants. And that looks like that. Um, it's published more or less every six years. Uh, the last one was, came out of the International uh, Botanical Congress that was held in Shenzhen. So this code is called the Shenzhen Code. Um, and uh, see, and the next one will be the 20th one, and it'll be held in Madrid. So the International Botanical Congress is an enormous, great event. Uh, the actual Congress itself, the one in July, uh, starting July 21st, uh, is where several thousand botanists from all over the world get together once every six years, but actually seven years this time because of the pandemic. Um, and uh, they have sessions on all different aspects of botany. If you ever thought botany was dying, go there and you'll realize there's a lot of people working in botany. Anyway. The week before that is the nomenclatural session, which is a lot smaller. There's about 200 people involved in that. And that's more what I'm going to talk about. And that's where uh, nomenclaturists get together and talk about what the next code will be. And so the next code will be the Madrid code. So the problem, uh, we had a great introduction to this just before. But effectively, uh, we can't name uh, uh, many organisms we know exist um, and in particular, in the, this particular case, we're talking about algae and fungi, particularly uh, single-celled ones, because we need to have a type specimen, and that's written into the code that we need one. And without a type specimen or maybe a culture, uh, we can't put a name on them yet. So back in Shenzhen, uh, suggestions to use DNA as a type were rejected, uh, but a special purpose committee was set up to uh, look into this problem, and various people volunteered to be part of that special purpose committee, including myself, and we were led by uh, Kevin Keeley, actually from Australia, but not here today, um, who did a fantastic job of taking us through the whole process over the, the, the next six years. And uh, we published earlier this year a, a sort of position paper, a discussion paper, as it's called on there, from the special special purpose committee, uh, looking at the different options for uh, plants, algae, and fungi. And we came up with various tenants on how we should work. So the questions about the merits or otherwise of DNA-based taxonomy are out of scope. So this is really about nomenclature. So we don't, we don't really care about the process of taxonomy. Um, we're not interested in that. We're just about the rules of nomenclature. So that's an important thing, but it makes it a lot easier for us to work. We also decided quite early on that we weren't going to bother with multicellular things. So uh, vascular plants are really out of scope. You can always make a type specimen. If you can't, make, can't find the plant associated with the DNA sequence as a problem, you should probably go and look for it because it's not, go it's not going to be so unobvious. And the same goes true for macroalgae and, and macrofungi as well. So we're only talking about microorganisms, um, but also you heard from Maria a lot about the the um, the importance of deciding how long a piece of DNA, whether you need a genome or a barcode to name things. We weren't going to discuss that at all. This is again, this is nomenclature, not taxonomy. So the is issues of whether you need one or the other is a taxonomic and a scientific question. Nomenclature isn't science. It's about the rules of naming. So we don't get into that. Um, and also, um, it's the same principle with type specimens of physical 
you need to allow people access to them. And if any naming is going to get done using DNA, then those sequences need to be open in online repositories. So we basically came up with two proposals. Uh, you've got a choice. You can have DNA as a type, as been suggested uh, for prokaryotes. Um, this is quite attractive because it means every name ha can have a type associated with it, and you know what that is, whether that's a DNA or a visible type. Or you can have a suggestion uh, whereby you have no type. Now, there are tons of names out there with no type. Uh, all the name names started off with no types, and types have been added to them subsequently. And so we seem to be able to manage with a lot of names with no type specimen. And to, man to many respects, a DNA sequence is not really like a type specimen. It's more like a diagnosis. And so some people prefer to keep everything having a type. Some people prefer having no types on things. Um, in the practical consequences are very uh, similar. So we then go through the current Shenzhen code, look for all of the articles within the Shenzhen code that need uh, adaption and, and for instance this one on the on the left of uh, DNA is types we need to add that the text in bold and there are many articles and they all got little bits of bold in there or maybe some crossings out where we need it and so this particular one uh, for DNA types you have to add this sentence a holotype may also be effectively published as a DNA sequence see article x1 that in uh, article x1 in that particular proposal it uh, states that that has to be a microorganism, or at least believed to be a microorganism based on its sequence. On the other hand, on the no types one, we have a whole other different uh, edits to the code, and there it says something along the lines of application of the name instead being fixed using a DNA reference sequence. So it has no type. So we've made two proposals up. They have not been published yet. I think they will come out in the next... Uh, uh, release of uh, taxon. Um, all proposals for changes to the, uh, the code, the plant code at least, get published in taxon. Um, okay. And uh, this one, proposals to make DNA sequences to serve as types, uh, is the types one. And the proposal to make DNA sequence to be used for fixing application of names is the no types one. So all of these proposals for the next code, including these ones, will get published in Taxon. Uh, sometime early next year, there will be a postal vote of members of the International Association of Plant Taxonomy. And that postal vote is just an indicative vote for the, uh, the, the committees to decide which ones will go forward to be debated uh, at the nomenclatural session in Madrid. And so, uh, these two hopefully will go forward and be given a choice. But the reason why I'm talking today is because there's three things might happen. They both get rejected and we're still left in the same situation we were last time. I don't really want that. I think we've given two good suggestions for people um, and they should be able to change, <laughs> uh, pick one of them and let's go for that. Um, so, and it could be one or the other but it really depends on whether the community get behind this. And I, I see a bit of a problem in, in listening to the talk today that many of the people at the Nomenclatural uh, session will be people from herbaria, and many of the organisms we're talking about are not the sorts of organisms people who work in herbaria uh, work on. So the right people might be in, not in the room, and so I think we need to lobby the people who are going to vote to make sure this happens. So if you are at a herbarium and you care about this sort of inf this sort of information and you want something to happen go and talk to your curator find out who is going to um, the nomenclatural session and try and decide them to pick an option on here if you are not part of those sort of organizations you can go to the index herbatiorum there's an email address in there for every herbarium. You can find out the one for your countries. You can write a nice email to the curator and you can kind of lobby for what you want to happen. But I'd, I'm here to, to really ask you um, to try and do some lobbying on this because otherwise there is a danger that nothing will happen and nothing will change for at least another six years, which in my mind is too long for this to continue. So thank you. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them.
Do we have one or two questions? Thank you. Very great talk. Very relevant. <laughs> I have a question. So my understanding that for the voting of the proposal, you're going to include not just the members of the committee, but also you will allow voting to the authors and of the, uh, the, know, po the postal vote doesn't right? count from March. It only helps them reduce the number of proposals to go forward. So the the actual voting on the propositions is is at the the meeting in Madrid. And okay. and uh, how you think how rep how the com current committee and people who will vote is representative in terms of you know people who actually. <laughs> involved not only in herbarium collection, as you said, but also, you know, will account for the needs of the current science, you know, where you... I don't live. think it's fantastically representative at all. I mean... Because it, that was a problem with ICSP, where, the, you know, where we didn't have actually a lot of representative who, you know, involved in uh, characterization yeah. of uncultured <laughs> prokaryotes. Most of the people worked in culture collections and the vote was rejected because of that. Yes. But then when we conducted workshops and a community surveys with, you know, with microbiologists worldwide, microbial ecologists, first of all, you know, they, they all, of course, scream that, you know, they need that. There is this need. Yeah. And there will be some fungal nomenclaturists there who will care a lot about this. But that's why I think we need to do some lobbying because I don't think people really care if they just work on vascular plants the whole time. Yeah and they think of the code as theirs, but actually it's, it's much bigger than that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can I continue on the fungal topic maybe? Um, next year will be also a year for International Mycological Congress, and under the same code, the, the mycological chapter, I think it's 36, number 36, I think will be discussed and decisions will be made in Maastricht, not in Madrid, and I don't know how this, how this, um, how these proposals are handled by the mycological community? Is it separate from the consultations and the vote Doesn't, that you just presented, or is it part of the same story? So the code covers everything. The fungal people can do different things to some extent in their own chapter F. Yes. But if everyone accepts the solution for this, for everything, and the fungal people are happy with that, that's great, because that just covers everything, and we're all doing everything uh, harmoniously. Is that cool? Okay. Um, I'm curious, um, what you said makes a lot of sense. And so I'm curious though, for somebody like myself who's plugged into the biodiversity network, but doesn't have the expertise in this nomenclature world, um, would you be willing to draft some sort of letter or, you know, that we could um, pass on a sort of yeah, template possibly. to say, a good idea. we, I heard this talk, I believe it's important and here's some good reasons why. Yeah. All right. Good thank idea. you. Yeah. Just to add on questions with it. <laughs> To, to the to the fungal thing is uh, uh, there was this uh, unicellular micro thing. I mean, if that, if that's a hard term, then 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 we would miss a lot of the uh, f well, fungi the wording, that are actually macro uh, organisms, but they just don't produce food bodies. The wording we have is technically unfeasible to create a type. Okay, great. Right. <laughs> so in theory, it doesn't just cover microorganisms, but in reality, it is. Okay. So, thank you. Interesting talk. Now we have a, an example of, a, of, I guess, mobilizing a data set to a, a biodiversity repository from the marine world, right? Yeah.